Hello, everyone. Thank you for still staying back. Um, so the title slide photograph is partly to feel not out of place with other presentations and their scenic field photos, and to also show the stark difference of my PhD work, which has zero to do with what I'll be presenting to you today. So these three days, there have been a lot of topic on you know, the big picture stuff and useful showcase of technology um, in geoscience. And some people whom I've talked to, um, they say they would like to see, you know, how they could get started. And especially from yesterday's panel discussion, like, you know, where do we start and what's the <laughs> workflow? So I thought I could give like a more mini tutorial um, type talk. And then so I think part, part of the reason why you don't get a lot of details is probably the proprietary nature of a lot of corporations work. And the other thing I also realized is that there are three talks on using machine learning on rock classification. <laughs> So last night I had to scrape and rewrite half of my talk so uh, to see to get to make it more accessible for people and then especially those who want to get their feet wet and hands dirty. Here we go. So the question we want to ask is, can we automate lithology identification um, from well logs? And yes, we already know that we can from Asan's talk yesterday and then also from Jose's talk after me. And then secondly is. How about carbonate leucophages? Because yesterday, Asan was talking about um, using it on shale rocks. And then the reason we're interested in this is because carbonate reservoirs encompass more than 50% of the global hydrocarbon reservoir. And recovery factor is much lower than sandstone, like I think 25% or so. So, and this is due to lateral, vertical, and multi-scale heterogeneity issues. So then the last question we want to ask is, of course, what is the best uh, machine learning algorithm for this problem? So I'll start with um, getting to know um, this project. It's part of the SEG machine learning contest last year. And one of the, actually the number one winner is sitting here, Lucas Moser from Imperial College. Um, so the, the field area is a carbonate reservoir in southwest Kansas and more information can be found in this 2007 paper. I think he also wrote a paper in 2002 or three about it as well. The data set is seven predictor variables, or in the machine learning terminology, they call it feature vectors. And these are based on five wireline logs and some geologic constraints, ground truth by core observations. So the data is a multi-class classification problem and there are about 10 wells, and yes, they are relatively small data compared to what we've seen, but we always have to remember to start small, small and increase complexity and volume from there. So how can we, as a geo machine learning people, uh, apply machine learning to help us? And then we can start by jumping straight um, into ensemble learning and the reason I did that is because the SEG machine learning contest, um, they use support vector machine um, algorithm, which is, uh, I think it was like 40, 48 or 47% accuracy. So basically what, we impro uh, what a lot of people improvised was using uh, the wisdom of crowds, essentially, which is rather than making one model, we basically hope that this one model, you know, is the best and most accurate but you know, truth be told, it's usually not. So ensemble methods, they take into account like many models, and then they try to average the models to produce one final model, and it's usually um, much better in accuracy. The drawback to this, though, is overfitting, and overfitting is really, really um, commonly seen in the machine learning world. All right. So. What is the current algorithm that is currently adopted um, in a lot of these crowdsource um, competitions like Kaggle? It's actually XGBoost. I'm sure um, quite a number of you know about it. So um, for those who don't know, Kaggle is a platform that bridges data scientists and companies via crowdsource competitions. And the model was so successful, the business model, that it was acquired by Google last year, as some of you know. And XGBoost is a scalable like decision tree boosting system, and it implements this um, like multiple models uh, of the decision tree algorithms. The best part of it 
is that it accounts for computational efficiency. Um, I mean, it, it allows even like a person with a, an old laptop, a few years old, to utilize it really. And there are many resources to dive into the mathematical backing and systematic functions of XGBoost, but the main advantage is its feasibility. And it's really easy, relatively easy to tune parameters and modify objectives. You could even automate that part actually. Um, so next, we have, um, so how do we start about is, you know, we have to explore the distribution of the data um, of our training set, you know, when we split it to 80-20 and then perform univariate analysis to it. Here, what we can do is we can explore and condition our data, um, standardize it, um, remove outliers, um, remove incomplete data, and then um, basically plot it with uh, different facies. And then what you can see here is Dolomite um, has the least amount of facies, and we definitely need more training set for this. And you, could, you can kind of imagine that this will actually kind of lower the score already before even uh, running it. So secondly is we need to understand also, um, the second step is to understand the multivariate um, distribution of all these different properties or feature vectors and how they vary by rock type. And you, using scatter plot matrices, and if you can see this tiny part here, I, I'll put like the open tool software that we use for that. Um, and then the next is, um, the train, the, yeah, basically performing the, uh, running the model and then understanding the first initial result. So I will not labor on confusion matrix already since um, it's basically been talked about a couple of times, but it's basically like a test tool to understand the accuracy of our ensemble model. And then using machine learning algorithm XGBoost, we achieve 57% uh, accuracy, which is still, you know, it, it's 17% better than the benchmark of support vector mach machine. And sometimes it kind of feels like this, you're like, yay, um, this algorithm is so awesome. Um, it's like being used by all the winners of the Kaggle competitions and you're like, nope, not necessarily for uh, carbonate reservoirs. So what next? I'm sure you've heard a lot about feature augmentation or called feature engineering. Before we go to that, we can also find out which features are important in driving our model prediction. As you can see here, the, it's pretty small actually. The, the top one is gamma ray, um, and that is like the key importance in, in, in the machine learning model. So we can also exploit the fact that, you know, in well logs, we have spatial correlation. And like these data, they are measurements of sediment columns and the facies of a given interval is related to the one above or below it. So we can use that fact to play around with the data and add more feature vectors. So what this actually did was it increased the accuracy by 12% as compared to simply applying the XGBoost ensemble learning method. And if we want to dig further, we can see that the non-marine coarse siltstone, the shale, and a grain stone scores the highest, which again shows that the rest of the other carbonate facies are really hard to predict. So there's definitely a lot of work to do. And secondly, here's the, and lastly, here's the results, a well visualization of the results and the well logs. And you can plot this simply with an open source tool which was created by this geophysicist and he had his um, free code on GitHub. And here I'm showing the predicted and lithophages and the true label lithophages side by side. Again, to reiterate, the XGBoost algorithm showed an increase of only 17% as compared to the benchmark using support vector machine algorithm. But when you feature augment the, the variables, it increased the overall results by 47%. Am I going too fast? <laughs> okay. So here I will compare our project with uh, Assange and Jose Montero, which will be speaking right after me. Um, so as you can see, our carbonate is our carbonate reservoir 
is it also has some component of silicoclastics which might also impede the accuracy of the model. And then we have five well logs and seven lithophages instead of just lithology. And then we do relatively have a small data set. So of course, a greater data set would be helpful. And we only did minor feature engineering on this. And then, so the future work would really, um, I'm not sure if you guys heard of transfer learning. It's a type of deep learning method where you essentially, um, whatever you train, you kind of put it back into the input or something like that. And then it's actually very useful for limited data. And then secondly, we can definitely, it's definitely will, it's definitely interesting to actually compare models with other different carbonate mm -hmm. formations. Like, it's, I mean, in, in corporations, you have all the luxury to do that. Um, and then the third one is definitely train with greater variables and include more feature augmentation using carbonate geologist knowledge. And then so the take home message mm -hmm. is the machine learning technique. It's, you, you know, it has to be a step by step process. You have to start from the simplest and like what John said this morning, fail fast, fail often, and then quickly get up from it. And then secondly, is we really have to, um, it's, it shows how critical the human factor is, and it kind of provides some assurances that, you know, um, karmic geologists are still needed. And then thirdly is we definitely need to um, take advantage of the opportunities to explore um, lithophages classification with machine learning. And then, so this is basically what I've been showing is just one of the few projects that we've been doing in our spare time. And I think this might be the reason of um, lack of topography in and around Houston that triggered such hobby, to be honest. Um, so yes, what we also did was, this, like the second one in the subsurface hackathon uh, was using, uh, we created like this project where we, it's a cognitive geoscience assistant which listens to you and scans and queries a data, a well database and then answers you via Amazon Alexa. So that was a successful proof of concept that we did. And then the third one is a energy forum hackathon using unconventional data and just playing around with visualizations and clustering methods. And then the fourth one was a, oh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> Yeah, it's a Kaggle competition that we just finished where we used a um, deep convolutional network. Um, I think it's VGG16 algorithm to delineate iceberg and ship using synthetic aperture radar data set. And to set the stage, I'm no data science expert. I only have some domain expertise or just passion to do research and um, when I'm tired of my um, thesis writing. And then, I really owe my thanks to my coder, computer scientist, math and statistician friends, Li Cheng and Ching Zhan, who were very enthusiastic in coming together and solving problems. So the purpose is really a one of to, uh, to show you guys all these open source tools um, that you can use you know, in your spare time or when you're feeling really bored and then like here are the freebies for code resources and the slides. You can go to the GitHub page. And then for, and then we also have for students and graduate students, um, open source tools where we collate um, all these uh, geoscience uh, Python libraries and free softwares that you can use um, and readily available. So I think that's, that it is, thank you.